Good afternoon, everyone. I am finally here for Tuesday Tea Time. I don't know if anybody's going to join me or not, but I'm here. So for those of you who watch this in the replay, I apologize for being so late today. Some days are just like that. I am currently walking out to see my horses, and I thought I'd talk a little bit today about developing a bond with a horse. This is a conversation that came up with a student earlier this week, and I've been mulling over it quite a bit because of my own challenges. So. This is one of the things that I think I'm particularly good at. And the reason is because I work without tools, without food, without um, reinforcements of pushing a horse against a fence or attaching them by a rope. What's left is the connection you feel between horse and human. So I think I'm pretty good at it because it's what I study every day. But like anything you study, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know yet. So I'm learning more about it all the time. And a student asked me, you know, how, how do I develop a better bond or a better connection with my horse? And it was a really good question because I had to think about it in simple terms. What's the simple answer? And I believe the simple answer is the bond or the connection between horse and human is created by taking actions that show how much you understand the other. So in normal horse training, we talk about a, a bond being created or a connection being created when the horse does what the human wants. You know, the horse will follow the human or the horse will um, interact with the human or nuzzle the human or, but that that's only a one-way bond, in my opinion. That's the horse exhibiting behaviors that show them how much they understand what the human wants. And that's beautiful. It's beautiful to feel that connection. I'm not going to lie. I love it. But the other half of the connection is when the human shows the horse, they understand what the horse wants. And this can be tricky because if you show the horse what you understand what they want only when they're frustrated or irritated or pushy, you end up creating a monster. So that's not what I'm suggesting. I think it's really important to show the horse you understand what they want before they tip over the stress point of turning into pushy or anxious or worried. So if you're only showing the horse you understand them after their behavior gets extreme, you're a day late and a dollar short. And that doesn't really create a great bond. And it certainly creates behaviors in your horse you're not going to like very much. However, if you can find a way to know what happens next, you know when your horse wants to go to water. You know when your horse wants to look across the fence at the other horses. You know when the horse is sleepy. You know what the horse wants to do next. I'm duck under the fence here. When you can show the horse, you know who they are and what they want next. That is the other side of the bond between you. So it's the side I tend to focus on more in my training. Can I show the horse that I understand them and not expect them to understand me yet? A lot of horses are expected to change their behavior before the human feels satisfied that there's a connection there. So it only feels like a connection if the horse does what the human wants. So I would like to challenge that a little bit and say, maybe we could give the horse what they want first. Not when they're anxious or worried or scared or pushy, but before that happens. Maybe we could show the horse we understand their wants and needs and desires before their stress goes up. 
and then over time show them what we would like as well. So I just got here to the gate where my horses have been out in the far pasture and they would all like to come into water. This is something I can do for them. So I'm going to open the gate. Um, because we are integrating two new horses in the herd, it means that we often put a pasture between them when I'm not around. So sometimes I have to come move horses around and keep a pasture between them when I'm not here to supervise. This is one of the things that has been challenging in terms of keeping a stallion in company with other horses and introducing new horses into a group when you have a stallion. So there's Ari, my stallion. And the last week I've been a little bit frustrated because I know what he wants because there's new mares that moved in next door and they call to him and he calls back and it's tough being a stallion when there's fences in the way and you can't get to the girls that you can see just across the valley, particularly when they talk to you all the time. And I said, I've been struggling with this idea of a bond because dang it, I don't want to go look at the mares with him right now. I'm busy. I've got things to do. And that has not helped our relationship very much. So I can show him a lot of things I understand about him, but going to look, to look at the mares has not been something I had time for. And it just so happens a lot of the other horses don't have time for it either. We've got a bunch of pretty mellow geldings and they don't have time to go look at the mares with Ari either. So he's been feeling a little out of sorts and not very bonded or connected to most of the herd, which means he's a little grumpy. Um, he's a little quick to get frustrated with everybody. This has been a little bit hard trying to integrate new horses when Ari's in a bit of a mood. So I've been thinking a lot about it. How do you create a bond between horses and herd mates? How do I create a bond between him and me? And the sticking point is I really want him to change. I want him to be mellow and not worry about the girls across the fence. And if he could just show me that he understood what I wanted, I would feel bonded and connected to him. But that's not the way freedom works. Freedom means that I have to show him that I understand what he's frustrated about it before he's frustrated about it. I have to show him that I understand what's important to him before it's problematic for him. And I'm going to need to put a little bit of time into that this week if we really want to have a bond that goes both ways. So Ari, as usual, has more for me to learn. I thought I was good at this bonding stuff. And then when a challenge came up, I was frustrated. I just didn't have time for it. And he was frustrated. He didn't really have time for anybody because they didn't understand his point of view either. I think if I can take some time, take my tea with me, go out, look at the mares with him, show them that I understand how important they are. They're beautiful. They're on the hillside right across the valley. I can see they're very important. I really think it's going to help him then make an effort to do the things I like, which is to be kind and generous with everybody around him, to um, have more patience with the new horses that are coming in, to just be a more gentle, generous soul, even when there are things he can't have. And that's really important to me. If he can show me that, I'm going to feel like he's more bonded to me because he's doing things that I find important. But it's a two-way street. I have to do things that he thinks is important too. And I might not always want to do that. And I might not always have time for it. But I always say, if you have trouble with your horse, think about what their best friends do. So little gray Arabian behind Ari here is the only horse in the herd that really takes time to go do what Ari wants to do at a distance that he, Ari is okay with. So he'll move around until Ari's happy with where he's standing, and then he'll do what Ari's doing. And the two of them will do it together. And that is Ari's best friend in the herd. So if I want to be like Ari's best friend in the herd, 
I need to make an effort to do things that he thinks is important before I ask him to do things that I think is important. So I really think it's important that he integrate with the new horses in the herd and we'll work on that. Um, little by little when I'm around and I can supervise and I can make sure nobody scares anybody, nobody hurts anybody, um, and I make sure that they are all getting along, we'll spend more and more time building good habits of collaboration and cooperation with new horses. It's a little trickier when you have a stallion in a herd with new horses and he's got uh, wannabe girlfriends over the fence. Um, there are certainly ways around this. People will say, well, why don't you just geld him? I could, but I'm kind of interested in learning more about this and he's perfectly safe right now. It just means we need to take just a little bit more time showing him that we understand him before we expect him to understand everybody else. Not everybody's gonna go about it that way, but it's an interesting thought for you all. If you have things you wish your horse would do, or if you feel like they're just not very bonded or connected with you, it's probably because you feel like they're just not exhibiting behaviors that show they understand what you want. And we have to ask ourselves, can we give that back to them? Can we show them behaviors that they want? Them behaviors that show how much we understand them and then find ways to develop. And this is where freedom and training meet up. So what I teach is called freedom-based training because in the beginning, the horse is free to be exactly who they are and do anything they wanna do, as long as it's safe enough. We'll use fences and whatever else we need to to keep it safe. But as long as it's safe enough, they are welcome to do whatever they want to do. And my job is to show them I understand. Once I've built that half of the bond, then I'm going to start using a little bit more pressure at times to help them understand what I want. And I like the 80-20% idea. So 20% of the time I might use a little bit of pressure to say, hey, could you do something that I really appreciate? And generally I find horses are herd animals. They want to work with you but they need to know that you're working with them first. And that's the way it goes if you're basing your training on freedom. If you always have a halter and a rope on or you always have food in your pocket, you can base your relationship on pressure first, which is the horse has to do what you want first. And then later you'll start showing them you understand them. There's not a right or wrong about this. It's a choice. And the cool thing about it is it's a choice you get to make every day and every moment. And you can alternate more pressure-based training versus more free training. I just am fascinated with the free training. So I'm gonna go move horses around, put the new ones up in the next pasture so that these guys can get all the way to water. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put them together while I'm supervising and ask Ari if maybe he can behave in ways that I really would like, where my whole herd gets integrated with the two new horses. And uh, then we'll find a good place to end and I'll go show him how much I enjoy doing what he likes doing. And we'll go look at the mares next door and we'll enjoy watching whether they're walking to the top of their paddock or the bottom or the left or the right. It's all fascinating to him. And my job will be to take my cup of tea out there and show him I understand before it's frustrating, before it's anxiety producing, before it's any sort of stress, it's just interesting to him. So Christian says, my pony Woten seeks specific spots on the paddock that have individual meanings so I would know what he wants. Yeah, yeah. And the horses are always looking to communicate with you. They're always trying to show you what's important to them. And if you don't understand it, they'll generally escalate. That's the great thing about horses. So they're gonna escalate in one of three ways. They're either going to push more until you understand what's important to them. They're going to pull away more until you understand what's important to them. Or 
they're going to, this is the hardest to read, they're going to ignore you by eating or sleeping every time you're getting colder. So every time you're doing stuff that isn't important to them and doesn't make any sense to them, they're just gonna zone out eating or sleeping and ignore you until you get it right. So it's a little bit of a game of hot or colder there, where if you feel like, oh, my horse is just always ignoring me, it means you haven't really had what's important to them. And maybe you don't need to, but you do need to keep trying. So I find in relationships, effort counts for a lot more than you realize. So even if you never get it right, if you keep trying different things, and notice when there's a little glimmer of interest in your horse's eye and pause there. That is gonna tell the horse that you're getting warmer and you're putting an effort in. And they develop a system of being able to tell you, yes, that's a behavior that makes me feel more bonded to you. That's a behavior that makes me wanna be with you and spend time together. And so pausing at that little glimmer where they start using their five senses more and they start feeling more alive and alert, when you pause there, it gives you and them a moment to remember how you got there. What did I do right before this moment? Let's see if we can repeat that behavior. We can repeat whatever that was that started to bond us together. So I hope that's helpful. Um, Kristen says, or they'll look at you for 45 minutes over the fence until you do something they want. Yeah, so when it's over the fence, Christian, that would be a type of pressure because if the fence wasn't there, they would get closer and they would push into your space until you do something they want. So when you've got a fence between you and them and you can see them up against the fence, you know that that's a thwarted push. They would keep pushing if they could, but the fence is in the way. So I try and work in situations where I move around so that they, I would pass them if they push me. So if they're trying to get closer to me, I'm trying to get closer to them. And then I just pass them and I circle around and we'll do that as many times as they want until they can figure out how to tell me where it is I should stop. Where was I supposed to be? Um, so that push is saying, I want something to happen. And if I have a horse that's pushing on me, I will continually go to them and pass them and around and to them and pass them and around. And I'll do it in as many different ways as I can until their body settles and their senses start coming alive. And you go, oh, that's where my behavior hit the mark. And you're starting to see that I'm trying to do the things that are important to you. Um, I find that horses can get frustrated, just like we can, but if they see effort is being made to adapt to each other and do behaviors that demonstrate that we understand or that we're trying to understand, that's where the bonding happens. And failing is part of this. So not doing the right thing some of the time really does increase the intensity of the bond when you do do the right thing. So I aim trying to do that right thing, whatever that is, or help the horse to do the right thing so that I feel understood 80% of the time. And then 20% of the time, we're gonna get it wrong. And then we learn more from that. So hopefully that is a little inspiration for you. Um, I will be here next Tuesday, hopefully a little bit earlier in the day, but sometimes life just runs away with you and you've got to ride the waves until you get a moment to breathe. So have a wonderful day, you guys, and let me know if any questions come up from this.